Hello and welcome to the weekly Blackpool FC preview show. I'm Jed Mills and here's what's coming up today. We'll look ahead to the weekend's game against Bristol Rovers. Neil Critchley gives us thoughts on Sunday's match. Chris Maxwell discusses a couple of award wins. There's Luke Garber on his first season in Tangerine. Plus, we'll review another successful week as the Seaside has secured their place in the playoffs. I'm pleased to welcome back to the studio this week former Blackpool striker Andy Priest. Well, Andy, I mean, it couldn't have gone better, could it? A, a fantastic result, fantastic two results. Uh, the pressure was certainly on in that Doncaster game, you know, needing the point. And the way that Blackpool, for me, went into that game, the way they, you know, just performed in that game was, uh, was, was just so professional. It was brilliant. Yeah, they just seemed to focus themselves on look there's still a job to be done I think we were talking the last time I was here about all oh, the playoffs and and those two two defeats just knocked, knocked us back a little bit but the way they've reacted from there they've really got things back on track you know three clean sheets um, and a performance under pressure um, to play like that and to be as comfortable as they have in the last two or three games um, shows you know that they're ready well, let's uh, look at some of the highlights first with the Northampton game and Luke Garbert uh, again. He he's just been uh, for me sort of that secret weapon. He can score goals and just some great goals as well. Yeah, he, his energy. You know, he's got great energy up and down there. And with the change of system now going and playing uh, as a wing back, um, you know, his, his desire to get beyond uh, the strikers um, and the goal he scored. You know, if I'm a striker in the box, and probably when he's shot, I'm probably <laughs> think, about to shout at him, and then it hits the back of the net. Um, but you know, it is a great finish, and he's got a great left foot on him. Well, Jerry Yates again passed that uh, 20 goal mark, which is a brilliant achievement. I mean, as a striker, um, you must look at that. You must look at sort of goal tallies for the season and look back at your career as well, and and how tough it is to actually do that. Yeah, 20 league goals is is, is really tough. You, you're talking a goal every two games. If you play every game, you've got to stay fit, you've got to stay in form, um, and you've got to put your chances away when they come. So to get 20 league goals, no mean feat, and um, you know he's deserved that. You know, just on his work rate, and you know the couple of goals that he, that he scored recently. You know, just being on the spot, following things in. You know, nice little tap in uh, um, against Northampton. So uh, yeah, you know he's been great, and now he's you know he's in that form as well going into the playoffs. Yeah, which is massive, isn't it? And the first time since uh, 93, 94 with uh, Andy Watson, who I know you played with, for, I think for a season, was it? What was he like to play with? Watto was uh, really strong, really good with his back to goal. Um, you couldn't get the ball off him. He wasn't the biggest, but uh, very difficult to get the ball off. Um, and if any chances or any balls dropping around, Watto would be on the end of it. Uh, a good lad. Um, and, you know, we, at that time we had a number of strikers um, who, who could start and it, it, it was tough to get in the side because uh, you know there, there was me Tony Ellis uh, Quinney was there um, so you know Watto was probably one of the best finishers I've probably worked with and looking at that Doncaster game as well we talk about Jerry Yates talk about Luke Garbert getting the goals but against Doncaster it was a brace from Ellis Sims which again when you're going into playoff football every player high on confidence that would have done a world of good oh massive um, to have two strikers now uh, on form scoring goals and going into the playoffs it is, is massive you know and Ellis is you know he probably had a, a little bit he probably think a little bit of luck but he was in the right position mm. to, to, to get into uh, to get those scoring opportunities you know the first one the keeper's got a touch to it but it's looped and gone in and you need that little bit of luck as a strike and again he's gone through and it's rebound come back to him and, he, and he's tapped it in you know that's going to fill him with so much confidence going, going into these key games and 
can't tell you how important that is uh, going into to playoff games that you are in form and your strikers especially are in form. I know you've been impressed with be more of like that sort of coaching angle that you've come from. It's the the, the formation, so they've changed things up and we talked to Chris Maxwell who said against the Sunderland uh, game, you know, they changed things up, they found out late, obviously, you know, did the job, sort of kept those formats and that's what you've been impressed with as well, how they've been able to change formations but still keep that momentum and, and keep that sort of unit together. Everyone seems to know what they're doing. Yeah, and that, that's not easy because, you know, it's game after game, so to actually work on a different system, you, you've hardly got any time. So. You, you know, to get those messages across to the players so that they understand their different roles in, in different systems. You know, uh, I think Critch was saying, you know, credit to the players, but, you know, credit to him and the, and the staff to be able to get those messages, be able to change systems like that. Um, and now, you know, they've been 4 4 2, 4 3 3, now, you know, a 3 5 2. You know, teams are not going to be quite sure what's coming from Blackpool, and uh, you know that's that's really impressive. So you know that's more armoury going into the playoffs. So as, as a, a coach on the opposite side, so say you were thinking, right, we've got Blackpool this week or Blackpool in the playoffs. What are you looking at? Are you then going to have to look at the, all the different formations because you just don't know which one they're going to play? Which again makes it so much more difficult to, to line up against Blackpool. Yeah, you, you, you've got to be prepared for, for, for any system. You know, you'll try and look at patterns and, and maybe the, there might be a pattern to, to what a, a team's doing. Um, but you're going to have to be ready for, you know, for it uh, at the last minute. And to be fair, it happened to us when we played Wolves that they've been playing for, been playing 4-4-2. But earlier on the season, they play, you know, they've been playing 3-5-2 three, three, and, and, uh, or with a, with a box in, in midfield. And they, and they changed on the night and we, we had to make a decision whether to change or not and, and that can happen and uh, you know it, it's good to have that, that up your sleeve it, it's going to have a few, few teams guessing in the playoffs Well the clean sheet that Chris Maxwell kept against Doncaster on Tuesday night was his 21st of the season This weekend he'll be presented with the Golden Glove in Skybet League One having also picked up an award for his work in the community Here is the Seasiders skipper discussing those accolades Very proud it's something that I've, I've always wanted to achieve since I started playing professionally and to get the award is, on a personal note, is something that I'm yeah, really, really proud of. You've come close on a couple of occasions, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, and to finally win it with this group of players and, and the contribution that everybody's put into the award is, is something also really special to me. I could give the old cliche of it's about the whole team and things like that, which is true. But I think this season has been specifically true as a result of the hard graft from the manager and also the instructions that the players have taken on, but also to act upon them and, and do them in games is, uh, has been excellent. So it's been a real team effort and yeah, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of this group. How do you think you feel when you receive that award on Sunday before the game? Yeah, well, me being uh, miserable like I am, I'll be thinking about the game and hoping and making sure that we get three points. And the the two playoff games are massive in our season. That's what we've been building towards. That's what we've uh, we've been competing for week in week out for, and that's our chance. But we've got a tough game against Bristol Rovers first, which we've got to come through and uh, move on to them two games. When you look at the saves that you have made this season, which one are you most proud of? Um, it's a toss-up between a few. Um, the Oxford at home, maybe. Um, Sunderland away was obviously was an important one, enjoyable one as well for myself. But I've I've said it before, the MK Dons one, tipping it onto the bar because I really, really wasn't well that day, and it was. It was touch and go whether I was going to play or not. And certainly, if I was an outfield player, I probably wouldn't have played. Um, but to come through that, to contribute and to get a clean sheet and also three points in that game was massive. So, yeah, I'd have to stick to that one. I mean, you did miss a couple of games because of COVID. And when you look at that clean sheet record, it's more or less one in two games. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's been a good habit that we've had this season. Um, we're we're building on it. And we're learning every day and we're gaining momentum in terms of our performances both defensively and now offensively too so it's it's an important stage of the season and habits like keeping clean sheets are, are something really really good and we need to keep going 
the manager has talked about <coughs> sort of the process and consistency of training all season, and yet the back line has changed so much. Has that changed much for you as a goalkeeper, or have you been fine because you know all the lads in front of his games from training? Uh, yeah, sometimes the selection is a bit difficult for myself when you've got Dan and Dan centre halves, and you're trying to tell one Dan to do one thing and another Dan to do another thing, and also two Jordans that I've had right back in centre half. So, listen, it's it's a credit to the manager because I've said it umpteen times this season. And every player knows every player's job inside and out. So, for players to come into the team and perform like they have done is is not only a credit to themselves, but also a credit to the manager and staff to relay that information and allowing them to perform the way they have. And off the pitch this week, you've collected another award, which is the club's PFA player in the community. How much does that give you a sense of pride as well? Sort of like that work off the pitch and, uh, and building relationships and connecting with fans and, and inspiring individuals? Well, for me, it's massive. I've, I've said it time and time again, If us as players can lead by example and inspire kids to behave better or learn or read or certain things like that then we need to do it if we can make a one percent difference in in our local community then it's massively beneficial but not only that lockdown and covid it's been really difficult for a lot of people so for instance, phoning people in lockdown and seeing how they were getting on and season ticket holders and certainly the, the vulnerable ones as well that have maybe not got um, family members close by or um, awaiting treatment in hospital and things like that. It's, it was it was really, really good to speak to those people, but also to learn. Uh, I've only been at Blackpool now for uh, 18 months. So to hear the stories of prior to my time and um, I think I spoke to a lady, she was 91, for her to tell me the stories of what Blackpool were like in the, in the 60s and the 70s and stuff. And to hear those stories of um, them going to them games is, is, is brilliant and it's something I really enjoy and something that I'm definitely going to continue. The captaincy hasn't necessarily changed you because you've always been passionate about community work at all your clubs that you've done, but, but do you see it in a way as, as leading by example? Yeah. Um, but not necessarily because I've got an armband on the Saturday or Tuesday or being named captain in the dressing room. I, I think I think every player should be leading by example, but not only, not only that, everybody in, in society should be leading by example and conducting themselves in the right way. And This community that's been built within the club, but also within Blackpool is is growing. And for us as players to take part in um, things that are going to benefit that is is crucial to not only our development as as a group but our development as a as a club and a town so we all have to play our part and it's not just about Tuesdays and Saturdays but it's, uh, it's the little bits in between that also make the difference. Well Andrew, let's talk about Chris Maxwell who he's, he's been fantastic hasn't he and for me I think just getting that captain's armband as well. I don't know, he just seems to have stepped up in stature. I don't know if you've sort of taken that view as well, I'm not sure, but he just seems to have grown in character. I think so. I think sometimes taking a captain's armband can work two ways. You know, sometimes it's a bit heavy on, on people and, and they, you know, it doesn't uh, help their performance. But uh, with Chris, it, it seems to have really suited him. Um, and. You know, the impressive thing for me is when he makes the saves. At key times in games, when games are nil-nil or one-nil, you know, he comes up with the goods. Um, early on in games, there's a couple of games I watch it, early on he's made made big, big saves. Um, and the save at Sunderland, you know, what, what tremendous save that was, you know. Um, and he's done that continually throughout throughout the season. To be fair, the, the back four have done, done great in front of him, or the back five, um, I'm sure he'll say that. But when he's been called upon, you know, he's he's delivered. You're, you're right. I mean, a lot of people will you know look at the the season as a whole when you m make the playoffs, of course, and you think, well, yeah, we if we'd have just won that one, and if we just won that one, then you know what what could have been. But when you look at it, you'll forget about save against MK Dons, penalty save against Accrington, Sunderland. Like you say, the amount of points he saved for Blackpool to get him into this position has, has just been has been fantastic and. Um, he has grown as a character, there's no doubt about it. 
But like I say, you talk about that defensive in front of him as well. It, it has all got to work in tandem, hasn't it? Yeah, look, that understanding between, uh, between him and the back four. Uh, is so important, but that gives him confidence as well. You know, so that, you know if a keeper's playing behind a shaky, a shaky <laughs> back four, it, it, it doesn't fill you with great confidence. Um, so you, you know, you know that you're going to probably have to pull off save after save. But um, he's just have to pull off the, the odd save in each game. But you know, to keep that concentration as well. You know, when you're not getting a lot of action, you know, when when you are caught upon, you have to uh, be ready, and he's been ready and. Uh, yeah, I've been so impressed. You know, every time you know uh, I watch a game, you know he delivers, and uh, you know it's a, it's a good place to have someone. You know, your strikers are very important scoring the goals, but your keeper, you know, that they can win your games as well. Uh, and the amount of clean sheets, as you say, we got that Golden Glove award. Uh, you know, that that must be super as a goalkeeper to you know not many do it and and to to get that many clean sheets, he must be. I know he he said it in the last week's program. It's all about the team. But just personally, must be fantastic. Oh, okay. He's going to be buzzing. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you do say those things and you do mean them. But for you personally, to have something like that to uh, to have for the you know for the rest of your life and to, something to look back on, you know, it, it's such a, n- a nice feeling. It'd be great for him. You know, he's going to be you know ten foot tall uh, after that, and 20, 21 clean sheets. <laughs> you know, it's a nearly every other game he's kept a clean sheet. You know, it's amazing, uh, amazing stat. Um, yeah, it's been you know it's been a team effort, but you know he's got you know he's got to be praised. He's been fantastic. Yeah, and off the pitch as well. We talk about the, the community. You know, I mean, how how much was it a community thing when when you were playing as well? I suppose it was coming into that, wasn't it? And there wasn't really I don't think there's much community trusts now back then as there, there are now. But being a captain, he seems to have just really stepped up. He's just enjoying his role there. Yeah, and you've got to have the right personality to do that as well, and um, to be able to go in and and, and talk to people um, and mix. Um, and he's, he's certainly that that sort of character. Wasn't as much, you know, when when we uh, when we were playing, but it, it's come more into the game now, and it's such an important thing for the fans to to, to feel their part. You know that they can get close to these players, and um, you know they're just the same as them. You know, there's there's, there's no difference, and uh, it's nice that. Chris has been out and, and really enjoyed that responsibility. Well, we saw the scenes, didn't we, at Northampton, the fans on the hill, which was great to see, you know, the players going over and cheering them. And, you know, some of the scenes after that Doncaster game as well that we've seen on the videos. And, and again, perfect example, Chris Maxwell out there, you know, and cheering. And again, but as a player, not only you going to see the fans and the fans appreciate, but just getting, I suppose, that energy because they've not had it this season. I suppose that just gives you so much as well. I think that's going to be huge um, because you, you don't know what what's going on, what people think. Yeah, you you know you can go on, you know, people talking on Twitter and things like that. But to actually get that feel and and that that buzz inside you that oh, it, it is having an it, it is having an effect. They are with us um, and just getting close. Although you know, distance and, and that, I, I think that's going to be huge, and that's going to kick the lads on even more. Well, fantastic achievement, and congratulations to Chris on those awards. To find out more about the Community Trust and their various projects, you can visit their website at www.bfcct.co.uk. Now, in part of that successful defensive line in front of Chris Maxwell, his former Everton man Luke Garbutt popping up with vital contributions at both ends of the pitch. Here he is discussing his thoughts on the season so far. The lads are buzzing, obviously. Um, you know, it's been a long, hard season. Um, obviously it was a tough start but then obviously the, the lads galvanised each other and I think our form pretty much since sort of October, November has been unbelievable to be fair um, and you know the gaffers obviously the way we train and the, and the way we set up um, you know tactically we've got it spot on in most, ga- most games this season and um, you know the, the uh, results have, have followed really so um, the lads are just ecstatic in the, in the changing room. It's been a big challenge, hasn't it, given how many games have been condensed over a Saturday, Tuesday, <clears> and it says a lot about the consistency amongst the group. Yeah, of course, we, we've had to, you know, um, overcome a lot of problems. Obviously, COVID um, has hit the group at certain times. Um, injuries have played the part, and obviously, with the schedule being so condensed as well, uh, we've had a couple called off through waterlogged pitch 
Um, so it's basically been Saturday, Tuesday from January onwards, really. And for the lads to achieve what we've what we've achieved is is unbelievable. To be fair, when you look back on the last couple of months, have you hit the the form that you expected to hit? Yeah, I think um, it was a tough start for myself personally, just because of the summer that I had um, with no pre-season, um, and then getting injured straight away my first start really um, and I was just struggling for that consistency of games but then obviously as I regained my fitness and um, started to get a run in the team um, now I feel as though I'm at peak condition and um, I'm really really enjoying my football. Yeah I suppose initially Neil Critchley sort of looked after you a little bit didn't he mm -hmm. you'd just like play one game miss a game until you got up to speed. Yeah, yeah I mean I've got to give him credit to be fair you know um, he managed me in the correct way because he didn't want to over push me. Um, you know, we had dialogue throughout that time as well, which was really good. Um, and and now, you know, I'm reaping the rewards from that. Really, um, I feel as though I'm much more consistent. I've got my match fitness, um, and you know, the team is just really well drilled, and and we feel really really confident going into every single game now. So. Um, you know that that's a positive going into the playoffs, and you know we've not achieved anything yet. Um, you know our aim and our ambition is to obviously get promoted out of this this league now, and we feel confident in the way we can go about it that we can you know give it a right good go. It's not just assists you've been getting; you've been popping up with some real crucial goals as well. Yeah, I mean. You know, it's something that I like to do. Um, obviously, first and foremost, I'm a defender, but um, if I can create and get on the front foot and score goals, um, that is also a big part of my game because um, I'm an attacking fullback. Or at the moment, you know, I'm playing as a wing back. Uh, either role kind of suits me. So, um, you know, long may it continue, really. And you just touched on there, it's, it's not job, job done yet. It's sort of part of the job done and now go and finish it off. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the message. Uh, the gaffers, you know, been saying to us over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, that nothing's achieved yet. Um, obviously, getting that promotion is our number one aim. But you know, we've got to take care of business with the with the semi-finals. Uh, we'll be well prepared, well motivated, focused to you know achieve what we all want to achieve. That was Luke Garbutt there speaking to the preview show, and uh, we we touched on Luke Garbutt his goals. Uh, for me, what's been really impressive is um, some of the set piece deliveries, as well that has come in. You know, sometimes at lower league, it's you see it floated in, but he, you could tell he's been at that really high level. The, the, the sort of the balls that get delivered is fantastic. Yeah, technically he's excellent, you know, and it's so important your set pieces um, because so many games are uh, decided by a set piece. So if you've got someone like him stepping up you always believe that you've got an opportunity um, you know and he's been at the top level so you'd expect that of him but um, yeah that's been really impressive yeah and a, and a great signing as well coming in from out I mean there's that clip of Ancelotti you know who is this guy that we've kind of let go but for, for Blackpool he's, he's arguably one of the best signings of, of the summer season yeah, he's got better and better, hasn't he, as the season's gone on. And now, it, it, you know, he does look like he, you know, he's a level above. Um, and I think just his attitude as well, you know, his, his work rate. You know, it's not just his quality, it's his work rate and energy that he gives the team as well. Um, so he's good for the younger lads to look up to as well. You know, he's dropped down a couple of levels with great attitude. Do you think that, again, you talk about the energy levels now, do you think being left out at the start of the season, you know, coming in a bit late to the, to the team, Neil Critchley sort of easing him in, that's helped him as, as they are now. Yeah, I think he's, uh, Critch has managed that really, really well. And now you're seeing the benefits of it where he can play uh, game in, game out. And with that sort of energy as well, you know, you know, I don't know what sort of distance he covers, but it must be up the top. Um, and you know, touch touch wood. You know, he's, he's not had uh, any problems with injuries. No, some of the goals as well have been absolutely crucial. Well, Garber and the team welcome already relegated Bristol Rovers to Bloomfield Road on Sunday as the regular season draws to a close. Here is head coach Neil Critchley discussing his thoughts ahead of the game. I'd much rather be in our position than uh, Portsmouth, Charlton, and Oxford's position. We wanted to get the job done Tuesday, so. Um, you don't want to. We didn't want to take it down to the last day because then 
Um, all types of scenarios can happen. Um, I've been involved in a few of them myself uh, previously. And then you're always, you know, you get there, someone's just scored, someone's conceded, we've scored, we need to score. They, anything can happen. Um, so we've taken that out of the equation. Um, and I say our, fo our, f our sole focus will be um, putting a team on the pitch on Sunday that we think is capable of going and winning the game, but also maybe looking after one or two of the others that have played a lot of minutes recently. I suppose it's a tough one for both teams to assess the opposition, isn't it? Because Bristol Rovers obviously relegated and they may choose to go with a side that reflects them more next season or just look to mm. bow out on the high. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you look at Bristol's team recently and they've, they've changed a lot of their players and they've changed and played different formations. Joey's obviously looking at all his players within his squad and deciding which ones he wants to um, to keep for next season. Um, so it's hard to predict what they're going to do. So we just have to really focus on ourselves and concentrate on our team, what what team we're going to pick and what formation we're going to pick and then um, getting out there and, I say, carrying on with the, the form that we're in. In the midst of doing your post-match interview rounds on Tuesday night, you were saying there was still that case of sort of what if throughout the season, when you look back to the reverse of this fixture, just to look at those stats and go, how? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bristol was one of them games that, um, yeah, you're a bit of bewilderment after the game, scratching your head thinking, out, how did we lose that game? Um, over, I mean, after, I think it was a 10, 15 minute spell after half time when Bristol, actually, when you were 2-0, could have taken the game away from us, but, for 75 minutes or 70, you know, 75 percent of that game, we were the dominant team, and I remember looking at the stats after, and we had 20 odd shots at goal, and I think it was something like 15 corners or something, and it was how we didn't win the game, and we lost. We didn't even draw. We lost the game. So uh, that's always one of them games at the end of the season. You think, well, what if, uh, what if we'd have got three points there? Uh, but I'm sure every manager in the division would look at certain games during the season and say. We should have won that one or drew that one. Um, yeah, but I think maybe after that we we started on a really good run, and um, uh, it's up to us to carry that our uh, sort of mini run that we're on at the moment. Carry that on um, on Sunday. We, we we don't want we don't like teams doing a double on us. Um, that's happened only a couple of occasions this season. We don't want Bristol to be another one. Well, playing an already relegated side, is it? For Blackpool, a case of against Bristol Rovers, thinking they'll have their flip-flops on and beach towels at the ready. How do you think this game will go? It's a difficult one, I think. Yeah, I, f I think you've got to try and go in in form. You know, you want to win this game, um, keep that momentum going into the playoffs. It can be because you're in it. Sometimes you, you think, oh, maybe I can just try a few players and, and make sure they're match sharp. But I think over the time, you know, the teams change that that often that you probably don't need to. Um, and you want to finish as high as you can as well. Uh, you know, it can be important that one place difference, you know, could just make the difference as, as you as you go in. So, you know, I'm sure I'll be focused on on winning this game. Um, as far as Bristol Rovers concerns, it's very hard to to say where they'll be because they they could be playing with all the freedom in the world, and and sometimes that's really dangerous playing against teams like that. Um, so, you know, it's just about focusing on yourselves and making sure you go in on a good performance and a win. Is it a case of, as well, some, some of the players for Bristol Rovers playing for contracts? That makes them dangerous, doesn't it? You know, they're playing for the careers going forward. Uh, some as well, I suppose, will, will not want to get big injuries that could keep them out for a summer season. So, as you say, there could be a real mixed bag. It, 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 it is. It, you know, anything can be going through the player's mind at this time. You know, maybe some of them think that Joey, Joey doesn't fancy him. Um, you know, are they going to be putting everything in? Um, others, like you say, fighting for contracts and, and giving everything that, that they've got. Um, but they're all going to be in the shop window. Whatever happens, you know, when you go out there, the, someone's watching. So, you know, as a player, you, you're going to go out and give your best, whatever. So um, I'm sure Bristol Rovers will be up for it. And for Blackpool, as you say, they're already in the playoffs, but to finish at the top of that sort of playoffs four, if you will. And, and as you say, you, you don't want to go into it on a bit of a lacklustre performance. So I suppose all energy levels will be into on Sunday. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I think you know you just look at this game, get this game out of the way, win this game, another good performance. You know, pick up another another clean sheet, and you're going in. You know, the informed team. You know, in the playoffs, whatever. But if it can be on, off the back of four wins, four clean sheets, um, and you know, and your strikers scoring, you know, everything really positive. Um, it's a good place to go into. So, you know, I'm sure. Uh, they'll be all fired up and, and ready for this. Well, Andy, thank you very much for your time today and hopefully we'll uh, see you back here soon. Remember, you can purchase an iFollow match pass for Blackpool's final home game of the season from the Blackpool FC website. Don't forget, kickoff is Sunday at 12 o'clock. The very best of luck to Neil Critchley and the side. And we'll see you back here for the preview show next time as we build up to Blackpool's playoff campaign. <laughs>